China is huge. Switzerland's share of the world population is 0.1%. China's is 18.5%, close to a fifth of the world population. In this lecture, we will be discussing China's modern legal system on the one hand, and classical Chinese legal thinking and social philosophy on the other. Chinese culture is not restricted to China. It is the leading culture in East Asia and has spread to a range of other countries, including Korea, Japan, Vietnam, and to some extent, Southeast Asian countries such as Malaysia and Indonesia, where you typically find considerable Chinese minorities that economically are disproportionate successful. Chinese thinking and Chinese philosophy are enormously influential in all of East Asia. Here you have the program we will be going through. Let's first go into the historical background. Here you have an overview of the history of classical China, or ancient China as opposed to modern China, and as you can see, Chinese history essentially consists of a long series of dynasties of Chinese emperors following each other over a time of roughly 4,000 years. Well, don't be afraid. You're not expecting to know all these dynasties by heart. Even though in China, every schoolboy and every schoolgirl would know them all. What I would like to draw your attention to is that China, over most of its history, was one big empire with a huge population being home for a quarter or a fifth of humanity. This is very different from what we have seen for India. While the Indian subcontinent was divided into a multitude of kingdoms and princely states over most of its history, in China political unity was the norm. Of course, there were exceptions of periods of political turmoil, but the normal situation over most of Chinese history was a huge empire run by a central imperial administration with an emperor at its head. To illustrate that point, I invite you to take a look at that video and then move on to part two.